Welcome to Base Habits, episode number 86. Today we're going to talk about Stuart Zender, original bass player of Jamiroquai. Jamiroquai is an English AC jazz and funk band formed in London in 1992. Led by the iconic frontman JK, the band found success in the mid-90s and continues to thrive today, thanks to their extensive discography, unique sound and numerous hits. Most Jamiroquai fans seem to agree on one thing. The first three albums, Emergency on Planet Earth, The Return of the Space Cowboy and Traveling Without Moving, stand out as fan favorites. Stuart Zander, the band's original bass player, has a lot to do with that. His incredible technique, impeccable taste and unique compositional skills helped shape the sound of early Jamiroquai, playing a key role in making the band what it is today. First thing that stands out is its trademark tone. Zander played Warwick basses for most of his time with Jamiroquai using various amps. Interestingly, he didn't rely on many pedals or effects aside from some compression and the occasional envelope filter. One unusual thing about Zander's gear is his choice of string gauge. During his time with Jamiroquai, he used Elite's bass strings with an exceptionally light gauge of 3595, which enhanced his already impressive dexterity. So most of his tone came from the bass itself and of course from his hands. Zander also had the ability to play short, punchy notes that gave early Jamiroquai records their signature pumping feel. His bass lines sound complex, but when you break them down, they're often made of simple elements. One of his signature moves is disco-inspired octave bass lines. What makes them sound so strong is how Zander plays them. The notes are very short and punctuated. The compression and its perfect sync with the bass drum do the rest. Ghost notes are another key ingredient. They're not easy to spot, hence the name ghost notes. These ghost notes add a percussive element, boosting the rhythm of a song. For example, in Cosmic Girl. They even allow for fills made entirely of ghost notes, like in Emergency on Planet Earth. It's interesting how Xander gets creative with the little things. Take the opening lick of Virtual Insanity. It's basically a B-flat minor 7 arpeggio played quickly with a muted tone, making it sound almost like a synth. Pretty cool, right? Xander also frequently uses power chord arpeggios like in the intro of If I Like It, I Do It. A variation he often employs is a minor triad with an added octave or a power chord with an extra minor third. The chorus of You 
are my love shows another cool variation where the bass lands on the fourth, which becomes the root note of the next chord. Zander's genius is in how he combines simple elements in clever ways. He's like the Geddy Lee of acid jazz. Stewart auditioned for Jamiroquai in 1993, at the time he was just 19 years old and believe it or not, had only been playing bass for about a year. In an interview, Stewart admitted, I'm really slack, I don't practice, I'm not someone who meticulously works on something every day. His intuitive and natural sense of music gave him an original approach to song structure. One pattern I've noticed is his tendency to alternate between a bar where he plays the root on the one and a bar with a rest on the one. <laughs> Mr. Moon is a good example. Also, virtual insanity. And whatever it is, I just can stop and many others. These pauses create an unusual rhythm, allowing the bass to be both a rhythm and lead instrument. It creates movement while still locking in with the drums. Virtual Insanity is also a great example of how Zander plays with dynamics, moving from tight, punchy lines in the verse to slap bass during the chorus. The mid-song bass solo is also pretty cool. First, the bass locks in with the keyboard, almost doubling it. And then breaks free, waving through the melody. Songs like Light Years and If I Like It, I Do It follow similar structures. Emergency on Planet Earth has an especially cool bass line, particularly in the chorus, where Zander shifts the accents, creating a driving rhythmic pattern. <music> Too Young to Die features a similar rhythm, where Zander's 16th notes and pauses transform a relatively steady beat into a more complex musical piece. <laughs> One of Zander's signature moves is placing his feels in unconventional and always unexpected moments. This version of Space Cowboy isn't the one on Jamiroquai's second album, The Return of the Space Cowboy. It's the version commonly played on the radio when the single came out and it's normally referred to as the Stone the Game mix. The album version is different with a longer runtime and a different bass line played by someone credited as Mr. X. Years later, Zander revealed that the bass player was actually Paul Powell, though Zander confirmed that he wrote the original Stone the Game Mix bass line. Stuart Zander left Jamiroquai in 1998 during the recording of their fourth album, Synchronized, due to conflicts with JK. Bassist Nicky Fifth completed the album. It's widely believed that JK wrote the song King for a Day about Zender's departure. Interestingly, it's the only track on the album with no bass or synth bass at all. This video only scratches the surface of Zender's amazing work with Jamiroquai. There's something to say about every single bass line on each song. If we were to cover them all, this video would be 3 hours long. Thanks God, he only made three albums. So do yourself a favor and go give him a listen. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.